My name is Rita Slatis. We're living here in Savannah, Georgia. I've been here for 28 years now. And I built and I run this assisted living facility called Buckingham South. It's actually a retirement and assisted living community. Um, I gave a lecture on why my mother and father went into the nursing home business, how they started in nursing homes in Chicago. And um, their reason was because they survived the Holocaust and they had no more parents left. The Nazis had killed their parents, their siblings, their children, everybody was gone. And so they had a little nursing home in Chicago and we lived up on top of the nursing home. They built a little apartment for us on top of the nursing home and we actually grew up thinking that everybody in that nursing home were our grandparents. This was Grandma Tilly and this was Grandpa George and every and I used to say to my friends, why is it that I've got 30 sets of grandparents and you guys have only two? And we actually believed these were our grandparents. We celebrated holidays with them, whether it was Christmas or Hanukkah, whether it was Easter or Pesach, we, we, sell, we were non-denominational and my parents felt that after the atrocities they saw in Nazi Germany they wanted to do something to rectify that they actually went into adult senior care because they wanted to care for people so growing up I lived in the nursing home uh, myself my my two sisters and my brother we lived upstairs but we played downstairs I remember there was one lady um, that taught me handwriting how to write cursive handwriting there was another gentleman 85 years old he he helped me with my math homework I want my children and my grandchildren to feel the same way and they do my son is here my daughter is here when my grandchildren come to visit they make rounds with me and they're not frightened of people in wheelchairs and they're not frightened if, if somebody has lost his ability to speak because he's had a stroke. Um, and they love the senior citizens and the senior citizens get hugs and kisses from little, little children. Some of them don't even have family. And they've all become our family. The next thing I knew, there was a petition in my mail. Dear Rita, can you build something of that nature here in Savannah? A, a, a facility, a healthcare environment that actually cares and is not corporate America and bottom line, what are we making? Something place that changes hands every couple of years as soon as they, they, they get the revenue that they were looking for, out they go clean sweep of the uh, employees and they wanted someplace where there would be quality of care continuity of care and that sweet loving touch and they said Rita we will help you do whatever you can do I said fine I went to churches synagogues Federation everywhere I could I said you guys build it and I will run it free of charge I will show you what quality health care is all about um, Nobody wanted to back me. Nobody, everybody said it was too big of a financial risk. They wouldn't do it, they wouldn't do it. And so my mother said to me, if you believe in what you're doing, do it. You know, my parents wanted to rectify the wrong that they saw in the Holocaust. They wanted to show society that senior health care is not a business. You're not manufacturing clothing and furniture. These are human lives and human life is precious. You know, the, the concept is that, you know, old age is like wine. The older you get, the better you get. And, you know, we, we live in a society that, that people just cast the elderly aside. They're not important. You know, youth and vigor, and that's what's important. And my parents taught me otherwise. They taught me there's so much to be learned from, from senior citizens. You know, sometimes I have them come into my office, and they know they're welcome into my office anytime. They come in, and we just sit and chit-chat about different things that I have learned, and I have grown so much. From, from these people. And like I say, I think the youth of today, if only they would realize that, like I say, the older you get, the better you get, that, that with, with age, there's so much that can be gleaned from these people. Oh, my mother and my father, they helped me back this. I built Buckingham South. And the moment word started getting out and people were seeing the quality of care that was going on here, we had waiting lists out the door and we even had to put an addition on the building in less than, than five years time. My mother's motto in life was always do it right or don't do it at all. Whatever you did in life, if you don't do it right 100% top top, don't do it at all. And she made me do a steel and concrete building, hurricane proof, pilings hundreds of feet in the ground, soundproof windows every window here cost I don't want to tell you how many thousands of dollars 
She said, do it right, because people appreciate quality. People say, how did you get the name Buckingham? Is that m the name of the nursing home that my mother and father built in Chicago was Buckingham Pavilion. And when I was thinking of a name, I'm thinking Magnolia Manor, no, 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 hot peach tree this, or peaches, that's the south, you know, um, grits, no, no, that won't go. <laughs> I kept thinking of all these cute names, and then I thought, wait a minute, who are the people that I want to emulate? What is it that I want to emulate? That love, that care, that passion for life is my parents. I'm going to name it Buckingham South in honor of my mother and father. Our administrator here is Catholic, and those Catholic residents that live here that have nowhere to go for Christmas, she takes them to her home to join her family. I mean, that is what I imbue my entire staff here with. This is not. These are not residents, these are not customers, these are family. And we treat our employees like family, we treat our residents as family. It's, we're one big happy family. You know, my husband's a rabbi, and he, what's so special about him as well is that he, you know, we have, we have priests and ministers that come here to visit their congregants, and then we've got, you know, rabbis of all three congregations that come here as well to visit their congregants, and um, we have transportation to their churches on Sunday if they can't get in here to visit them. Or, but what's so beautiful is that my husband as well is a very loving, caring person, and it sometimes almost makes me cry. We had just last week we had a, a gentleman who lives here he's 65 years old and he's he's suffered a little bit of a stroke and so you know he loves living here he's a brilliant brilliant man he's got his high-speed internet and whatnot he lost his sister last week and he was crying hysterically and it was very sudden and my husband now this is a Catholic man <laughs> he came in to comfort him and put his arm around him I'm gonna start crying and he's kissed him and he hugged him and he said it'll be okay and and he said let's go up to your room and let's talk and he the this gentleman came down later and he says to me I'd never thought in my life that I've had a rabbi clergy <laughs> comforting me in my time of loss he says but I called my family and I said you know I have a priest I have a minister and I have a rabbi <laughs> he said that and it was so beautiful he said if only the world could see that all of us could live in harmony and this is, like I say, he's a brilliant professor, a PhD, and he says, but I think Buckingham South exemplifies that the world could actually live in harmony no matter what faith or denomination you are. We could all love one another and give to one another and respect and honor one another.